Good morning. Welcome to Heritage Baptist Bible Study. Tom, we're glad to have you with us. First Peter chapter number one still. We're in, this is May the 5th. I don't want to date things, but that's when it is. You can look there and we'll get started together. We're uh, going to cover what I think is sort of an interesting thing. We're going to talk a little bit about angels today. Uh, and, and for some reason, this uh, uh, confuses people because he mentions angels and what they do or what he's and so we um i don't have any problem with that uh there's a bible has a lot to say about angels uh and if you are interested in that you can go to youtube or facebook or whatever you want you get on and i had a whole series about angels i did about two years ago i think it lasted about two uh, two or three five six weeks just talking about the different kinds of angelic beings that the scripture discusses and what their jobs are, and what they did, and who they were. Most of that, uh, most, a lot of people uh, I know today, anyhow, when I was in Bible college, they taught us that there were three angels that were superior to the other angels, and everyone, and they're all in ranks, and they all do those things, and Scripture teaches that, like an army. Matter of fact, it calls them uh, the, the army term. When they're using it, they're followers, they're fighting, they're doing, they're just, protecting they're caring each one of them has different jobs some angels their only job is to watch over people uh, children some of them's only jobs i think god it, 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 jesus said be careful what you do with little kids because their angels do stand before the face of god every day okay and so uh, there's a whole lot of things in that we're going to talk about that because peter mentions it this time because there are certain things that we can understand that uh, the angels don't understand. And I'll explain that when I get there. But if you're looking for an angel series, you can find it back in, in where we went. First Peter chapter number, uh, we talked about the grievous trials that their faith would have. And uh, we're going to get back over to the right verse. The trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire. Now, I don't know if, how many of you ever burnt yourself? All right. Anybody ever burnt yourself? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's I, I burnt myself quite a few times. I welded a long time. I welded for uh, jobs. I've welded at different things. Welded my own stuff. Okay. And what we have going in. And one of the things you learn real quick is why you're supposed to wear welder's gloves. And what you have. And uh, uh, I have been known to grab a piece of hot pipe and. Hold it, you know, when you're not supposed to do that. And so uh, it's really frustrating. All right, do all those things. Anybody ever like getting burnt? No, me neither. And look at the verse for me. The trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire. I've never seen, I don't mind gold being tried with fire. That makes it better, right? And I don't mean mind silver being tried with fire. And I don't, I don't like that. There's an immediate understanding that the trials you're going to go through are probably not going to be pleasant. Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulations. And I don't know where we got the idea that once we got saved, we we're going to float into heaven on a fluffy cloud. That's not what Paul said. It's not what Peter taught us. It's not what Jesus taught us. He, and he said, don't, don't get discouraged, but you're going to be tried. And from the very beginning, when Jesus went back to heaven, it was one trial after another with all those Christians that believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't just float in and take over the world, which they thought they might do, but it didn't happen. And it went from one thing to the other. When, when Paul the Apostle got saved and Jesus picked out the man who was going to baptize him, this is what the Lord told him. He said, For I will, must show him how great things he must suffer for my sake. Isn't that something? You could see us giving an altar call. We want you to come up here and be saved because you're going to be the most miserable person for the rest of your work life in your See, we wouldn't get many takers on that, would we? And we're careful to make sure that we understand. And I, I believe that. You say, what do you mean? 
<clears throat> I, I don't care what you're going through. For by grace you're saved through faith. If you had to clean up your life first before you got saved, then you're not saved by grace. You're saved by works. Matter of fact, the same verse says, not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation is one thing. A Christian testimony that honors the Lord Jesus Christ and shines like a light before the world is another thing altogether. That's two different things. How many of you, when you moms were in the hospital and your newborn was born, you got angry with them because they weren't already potty trained? Now, I'm serious. Did you? What? This ain't good. You don't even have any teeth. How can he chew stuff? And what's wrong with you? And Okay, now, how many of you know the verses? As newborn babes desire you the sensual milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Some of us grow faster physically. Some of us grew faster spiritually than others did. Those that compare themselves among themselves are not wise. That sounds like a Bible verse, don't it? Guys, I got saved on a Sunday, and by Monday, I mean one church service, he preached about hell, never heard about anything else. I didn't know it was a sin to drink, smoke, cuss, do all that kind of stuff. Nobody ever told me that. For some reason, I knew by Monday that I wasn't supposed to drink beer. How would you know that? I said, I'm still puzzled with that. I don't have a clue, except for one thing. The Spirit of God worked in my life. And in case you're wondering, when I told them I couldn't be there, and they said, what's wrong with you? Are you sick? I thought, well, maybe I'm sick. Yeah, that's what it is. I didn't know. The Holy Spirit's come over my life, and I feel him present. No, it didn't. I didn't know that. It just got saved last night. But I knew I wasn't supposed to. Most of you didn't get that that quick, did you? And I know hundreds of others that don't either. I'm telling you, your faith is going to be tried. Somehow, it'll be tried by people offering you to do stuff that you're not supposed to do. It'll be tried with temptations for you to walk the other way. It'll be tried with problems that are caused because you're trying to live for the Lord. It'll be Somehow, some ways, the devil will find a way to, to try your faith. 1 Corinthians, but we know this, no other foundation can... No other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. We're saved on that rock. For another preacher over here, we don't want them to stay at the foundation level, do we, brother? We don't want you to do. I had a guy one time stand up in Sunday school in my class and go, You're not going to be happy till we're all just like Jesus, are you? He finally got it. I said, you finally got it, Leroy. You got it. I'm serious. You finally got it. Oh, yeah, that's it. And God's not going to quit working on you. He which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And he's not going to quit working on you. I don't care how hard-hearted you are and hard-headed you are and how sinful you want to be. If you're his, he's going to work on you till the day you die. But you can't, you can't add together what you're doing with what you believe. Believing changes us. I be, I'm telling you that. When I believe there's a rattlesnake in a garbage can, I don't pick the lid up and stick my hand in it. Neither do you. When the sign says, bridge is out, I don't say, I don't believe that. I'm just driving right through. I, I believe it till it's proved wrong. There's a whole cool bunch of things. I, I forgot we were driving one time. I took a picture of it. I got it. I think you see it around sometimes. I'll show it to you. It's a sign. Remember I did that deal about signs? It was in there. It says, big sign. It said, caution, sign has sharp edges. <laughs> That's all it said on the sign. There you go. Just to let you know. Other foundation. Now, if any men build on this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. Three of those 
fire purifies. Three of those are consumed in fire. Our judgment is going to be with a fire that is nothing like what he's talking through here when our service is being tried by fire, but it accomplishes the same thing. There for rewards, all the crummy stuff, the worthless stuff, is this going to be burned and disappear? And the same fire that burns wood up to nothing purifies gold. The same fire, the same heat that takes away the wood and the stubble purifies the silver. Right? Okay. Here, that's what the fire does for us. Despite grievous trials, their faith should remain steadfast. And, and I've checked that out. I, nobody likes grievous trials, but they should bring you closer to the Lord. Every man's work shall be declared, for the day shall declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. If any man's work abide which shall build their own, he shall receive a reward. Now, that gold and silver and precious stones are not really gold and silver and precious stones in heaven. When the streets are made of gold in the new city, Jerusalem, why would you want to carry some of it in your pocket? I don't even care. You say, well, God's making this beautiful city. You know, I just want to be next to God. I, I don't care that I'm going to have giant gates of pearl. Anybody here saying, ooh, that's where I'm going. I'm going to scrape up some of that, put it in my deal, take it back to my mansion, put it in. And so somebody, be, somebody will say, look at that, he collects pavement. <laughs> yeah. If any man's work abide which you built their own, he shall receive a reward. Now I want you to grab this. You can't have anything there if you don't do the fire here. There's going to be all kinds of trials. My worst trials in my lifetime, I usually cause. My biggest problems usually come from me. When we get in today and I preach to you, David lists a thousand times over. Man, that's an exaggeration. And then Cheryl's told me a hundred million times not to exaggerate, you know. <laughs> all right. David talks about them wicked sinners and all the things that's going on. But I want to preach to you out of chapter 51 of the book of Psalms, the 51st Psalm. What David found out his worst enemy was himself. If any man's work abide which you built thereon, he shall receive it when he work. But if any man's Work shall be burned. He shall suffer loss. But look at this. But he himself shall be saved. You could lose everything you ever done at the judgment of Christ because you're not saved by works. You're rewarded for works. Yet so is my farm. I'm an absolute grace guy. And you say, well, you know, I'm serving God. If you're serving God, it's by God's grace because you're nowhere enough like him for him to like you. You understand in yourself. It's His grace that allows us to do that. And so let's look at this. Despite all this stuff, the B part of that, you need to be steadfast. See the A part? The trial of your faith, though we tried with fire, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found under the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. This stay faithful. Stick in there. Tighten it up. Find you some friends. Some friends that agree with God. Not just you. See, that's tough. You can ask a teenager. They're the only, only person they, can, they can't trust their parents. They can't trust their preacher. You can't touch. You know, any, you, only people you can trust is the, your friends at school. Because they have every answer. <coughs> can you ever get over that? You can get your life back where it belongs. But that's a tough thing, isn't it? 
Did anybody have any trouble with that besides me? Yeah. See, we all went through that as when we're old enough to make a decision, but smart enough, not smart enough to do the right one. I'm not just talking to you two over here, even though you're included in this. All, all of us did that. And we're supposed to try to make those decisions. But we had to learn, hey, wait a minute. My mom and dad never lied to me. These guys lied to me every day. My mom and dad never took my stuff. These guys take my stuff every day. My mom and dad never got me in trouble. These guys get me in trouble all the time. You want me to go on? And you, and you, you figure it out. We do the same thing with the Lord. Our faith, don't, don't let the devil, you know, he, he's going to tell you, and just like he told Jesus, I'll take you up here to this high mountain, show you all the kingdoms of the world. By the way, if you're wondering who they belong to, he just told you. And Jesus didn't say, those don't belong to you. Yes, they do. They're his. He said, if you'll worship me, I'll give them to you. That's what you want, right? You want the whole world? I'll give it to you. All he wanted Jesus to do was to bypass the cross. But see, Jesus didn't want a sinful, wicked, dying, perishing, separated from God world like the devil was going to give him. He wanted a world that he could redeem the people out of it. And he'll have it someday, but it cost him a trial to get there. No easy way on this, guys. There's, you're looking for the easy way out, then you'll be going. It won't be God's way. I promise you. You're going. You're going to have to go through that fire, and and, and stay faithful in it. What do you do? And you don't know what to do. Do what you know you're supposed to do. I, you know. You know where I got that from. Hezekiah. He prayed to the Lord and said, "Lord, neither know we what to do." And the answer was. Well, just do what you know you're supposed to do. Pray fast, ask God, take care of it. And trust me, and he did. Revelation said, And to the angel of the church of Laodicea, write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of creation. I know thy works. These guys doing work. That they are neither cold nor hot. That's the way we get out of it. We, we don't want to, we don't do it. I would that thou work cold or hot, so then because you're lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. My coffee's cold. <laughs> now I'm going to ask you a question. <clears throat> Did you see that? Ask me what I do when that one comes to me or either one of the other ones and go, hey, Papa, you got a dollar? They, they, I've, I've told them a long time ago, having a faith. Don't say, Papa, can I have a dollar? You say, do you have, do you have a dollar? Because if I got it, they're going to get it. Okay? But, but I, I have a whole bunch and we'll do just that. And I appreciate that. And, well, listen to me. Wonder what God would do. That's all right. When you do everything He asks you to do. Your Father in heaven knoweth you have need of these things. We forget. That's what fathers do. Mm, too hot. Burnt my tongue. <laughs> because thou sayest, I'm rich, increased with goods, have need of nothing, knowest not thou art wretched, <clears throat> miserable, poor, and blind, and naked. You say, well, I hope not. You know what I mean? No, you may hope not, but before the Lord, you don't compare in righteousness to God. He, he saves you by grace. He keeps you in His mercy. He uses you by grace. And then rewards you for it. That, that's an amazing thing, you know? And then watch what He said now. We talk about the trying of gold and silver. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Is He talking about real gold or is he talking about a reward in heaven? That thou mayest be rich 
in white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that shame of thy nakedness did not appear, and anoint thine eyes that I save that thou mayest see. Isn't that good stuff? I like that. Ew. No wonder Peter got such a great book. The ratings were high. Trials in the life keep you focused on security in salvation. This one thing I know. Who said that? Who said that? The Apostle Paul. This one thing I know. I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. You know what it is? My soul. He never, I, I, anybody match the Apostle Paul's works? Guys, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Come on, you're, you're not going to make it. I don't think Paul's in heaven right now looking at my sermons on YouTube going, boy, I wish I'd have thought of that, you know? Ever. But I want to tell you this, in whom having not seen you love, though now you see him not, yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. We sing the song. Full of glory, full of glory, with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And the half has never yet been told. Hey, Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Now, for some reason, my notes did not appear up here. So I'm going to move on, but I'm going to give you a little tag. 2 Timothy 1, 7 through 9. And you can look that up when you get home. But I want you to, 2 Timothy 1, 7 through 9. Trials keep you focused on your security. The natural must find receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. You'll never get lost people to think like saved people. You'll never get backslidden people to think like spiritual people. We think different. We see different. We understand different. I had a guy in my church years ago he was sitting in my church one Sunday morning and I'd never met him before in my life and he was sitting out there and he's just listening intently and he came in with a young lady, sat down and found out later their husband and wife and he sat there and was nicely dressed and I'm preaching about why, it, what difference does it have, you know, you say, well, my car don't have this and his car does that and, and you know, Justin has a yellow Cadillac and mine's got scratches on it and he, she had a brand new and all that. I said, you know what? What difference to a blind man would it make? What color car would make a difference to him if you're blind? So after church, he walked up to him and he goes, do you know who I am? I said, nope, never met you in a lifetime. I'm Pastor Nook. He introduced himself to me and he goes, I'm blind. He said, but now I see. I said, Okay. I know that song myself. Hey man, I once was blind, but now I'm seeing him. He said, no, no, I'm telling you that I was born blind until about five or six years ago. I got struck by lightning. And when I woke up in the hospital, I could see. And for the first time in my life, I realized things were, when they were saying, that was blue, that was green, this is yellow, that's, he said, I didn't have any clue what they're talking about. I'm thinking, in my mind, I had all kinds of ideas what that must mean until I saw colors. Can you imagine? He was over 20. Never seen colors in his whole lifetime. <coughs> it's pretty hard to explain that, isn't it? You ever, you ever seen the explanation written out by the four blind guys who are examining an elephant? You ever, you ever seen that deal written out about that? Seriously, there is a whole... Go, go Google it when you get home. The blind guys that are telling what an elephant looks like by feeling of it. It's an amazing thing. That's what we're like when we're lost. Trying to see God. It, he doesn't fit into our picture. He's not sin like we are. He doesn't, un, and, and he can't do that. But the natural man, that's the guy without Christ, Receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness unto him. How can he? He don't have the Spirit of God. And that comes with trusting Christ as Savior. 
in whom after you believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You didn't have that on and before he was just convicting you. Now he's sealing you. There's two big differences. Because they are spiritually discerned. How can you be spiritual if you don't have the Spirit? For who knoweth the mind of the Lord that you may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. He's saying, listen to me. If you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, there will be something in you that triggers the fact that what is permanent and eternal is way more value than what's temporary. It'll teach you to keep your mouth shut when you want to just cut somebody's head off with your tongue. It'll teach you to reserve your judgment when you want to condemn them as a filthy sinner. It'll teach you a whole lot of things of what you need to do, how to treat your parents, how to walk around with your friends, how to do these things, what, and how to obey authorities and everything else. That's what the Holy Spirit does in us. And you can see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18 when you read it and get home. Salvation was foretold by the prophets. And that's what he's telling you, verse 10, if you look down in there. To, uh, go back to the book of Peter here in verse, I just went through verse 9. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired, searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. There, I can lead you to the Lord out of the Old Testament. You say, how do you know that? Because everybody, the Apostle Paul, won to the Lord. The only thing he had was an Old Testament. When they kept saying and Jesus kept saying and they wrote down about the Scriptures, they were talking from Genesis to Malachi. That's all they had. And they could take those verses and prove that's what Peter did. Go back to Acts chapter number 1 and 2. And Peter proved to them that Jesus was the Christ from the Scriptures. The Old Testament. The Old Testament. Everything's there. Including the New Covenant and we'll get into this a little bit later, including the new name for Christians, including the new creation of a human, and all those things were in there. You get a new heart will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. The, it's an Old Testament verse. One more. This shall be written for the generation to come. The people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. First time I ever read that, I was going, wait a minute. There are going to be a new created people? Yeah, there is. Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now, I'm going to quit here, but I'll start out next week with this. One of the things that I like to do, I found out that that a picture is worth at least 50 words, okay? Some other people it's not, but you got to get it. Uh, I just went through this with my class the other day, guys, in, in my teen class. <clears throat> I want Remember the little charts that I draw you? What we were like when we were lost and what we got like? No, we're not a donut until we get saved. We're a pie. We're a pie, okay? And I'll, I'll, I'll start out with that next week and I'm going to show you. But it's, think about a pie cut in three pieces. Body, soul, and spirit. All right, You could lose the Spirit of God and still be alive because you've got a soul and a body. And that's where lost people are. But they're dead. They're separated from God. That's what the word dead means. All right, Separated from God. If they lose the body, their soul then is separated from God and it has to go where God is not. And there's only one place He's not. But if God could change you into a new creation, then that wouldn't be the truth. And that's what He does. Our body, we look like a pie then, and I can understand food, amen? But now we look like a donut because the Spirit of God seals our soul. You can take away, and I have a God likeness again. You can take away my flesh now, and my soul is still sealed in the Spirit of God. In whom, after you believed, Ephesians 1, 
you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Father in heaven, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love to us. And we ask you, Father, to bless us. We study your word, not just to know, but Lord, to apply. Thank you, Lord, for the great things you have, the people you put around us, the missionaries that serve you, Lord, all over the world and allow us to have a part in their work. And I ask you, Father, to bless. Lord, I pray for Brother Justin and his family, Lord, and the loss of his grandmother. And I pray you continue to supply Lord, in that home, and I know she meant a lot to him. And I ask you, Father, that to remind us how much other people mean to us. And more than that, Lord, what it means to be your child. And we pray you'd help us to live like it in Jesus' name. Amen.